Did you know that everything in game dev is absolutely unnecessarily hard? Like, just to get an object to move in Unity, you have to learn a bunch of code and do vector math. So today, um, I'm going to be opening up a new engine for me, relatively speaking. Um, I'm going to be using RPG Maker MZ, which is relatively simple from what I've heard, but since everything in game dev is way harder than it needs to be, who knows what I'll actually achieve today. I have three goals. First, I would like to remove the battle system. Secondly, I would like to make all of the UI be black boxes instead of what it currently is, uh, because I can replace the UI with black boxes, then I can replace it with whatever art I want later. And lastly, I would like to build my first level with parallaxing in it. And um, for those of you who don't know, parallaxing is when, like, Mm, I, if you have like my two hands right and then this one moves faster it looks like you're slower wait hang on I'm not doing it right whatever parallaxing is when when you look into the distance and you're going like in a car you notice how the, the area right next to you in the car it looks like it's going really fast but in the distance it looks like it's going slowly doing that in 2d is how you get the sense that perspective and optics are working correctly in this 2d world the thing is as an RPG maker it's not that it's I mean, I think maybe you can use it for this, but what it actually is, is it's just switch from a sprites in a grid method to a, we're just putting an image here and then making it whatever we want and drawing wherever um, in like an external program. And I don't really know why it's called parallaxing uh, yet, but that's because I have only seen rumors of it on the internet. So uh, I don't actually know how it works. So we're going to find out, but that's what we're going to find out today. And we'll see if we can get through all three goals. Now that I've done the YouTuber thing, uh, this is actually just a devlog. Congratulations. So I wanted to just take you along with me on my first day of development in RPG Maker and uh, see how it goes. So to start off my day, I uh, got up, took a shower at like the glorious hour of 1 p.m. Uh, and then I came down and had, oh, I had to do my laundry. And then I came down and I got leftover uh, salmon sag and, or sag, I don't know how it's pronounced. It's a, a it's a very good though. And um, boneless chicken wings for lunch, mm, chimkin. Uh, then I poured myself some tea and I got down to work. Oh, an aesthetic tea pouring, oh my god. That's not true, I had to film this vlog interlude thing. Why did I bother to put the sparkles on when you can like barely see them once I move the camera out? No! This is my anti-rabbits eating my computer setup. <sighs> so, this is what I had from last year around this time when I was just messing around. I've got a world hierarchy, and I've got this one level that I did the parallaxing in, but I didn't remember, really remember how it worked. So, it was time to do research again, and I found out that the best way to get rid of the battle system is actually just to make it invisible, basically. So, you remove the way that it displays, and then you do some more research because I didn't know how to get rid of the gold. Um, and you set all the encounter rates to zero. And then, yeah, here's it without the battle system display. And here's it without the gold display. And here's with the black box is replaced. Okay, I'm not wearing my glasses, so you're gonna have to live with the fact that I can't see. Um, but we are at a really good halfway point right now. We just finished getting the UI changes in, or at least figuring out how they work generally. Um, so, like, they're not good, but I can make them good later. So, functionality is step number one, polish is later. So, that's the later pro Bell's problem. Um, oh, and also taking out the battle system. Uh, it was actually really easy. It was just a matter of finding someone to tell me how to do it. Thank God, uh, because that's not how my game dev experience has worked with literally any other game engine I've ever worked in. Unity, Unreal, um... What's the other one I've been in? Game Maker. Everything is way harder than I expected, like most times. For the rest of the day, the plan is basically just to do art. I'm starting with a hierarchy um, that's sort of trying to at least start to figure out what all the potential 
things I will need to do art for is, so then I can start on something that's non-essential but still interesting to me, and that way I can grow over the course of making stuff. Because I know me, um, I know I want to do the thing that sounds most exciting to me first, and I also know that it will then be the worst one because I will have done it first. That's like inevitably what happens is the thing that I do first is the most bad and then I have to redo it nearer to the end. So um, yeah, so we're just gonna start with um, something sort of non-essential. We'll see what I end up picking after I list it all out here and uh, yeah, we'll check back in later. Look at the buns. Look at the bunnies, look at them. Hello, Hestra, hello, Anka. Hestra, are you grooming? Are you grooming? <laughs> All right, gotta get back to work. So I started out by making what I wanted in the editor because this is the thing that determines where the collision boxes are. So we started out by uh, putting in just basic buildings and basic rooftops. Um, but one of the issues I quickly ran into with this is that mm, the rooftops made it so these specific rooftops weren't collidable so you couldn't walk behind them at all. Um, and I had to walk around in the level to test this. This is something you should always be doing as a game dev. So then I replaced them with a different type of rooftop and then I could walk behind them. And I ended up having to delete these rooftops layer because that's how parallaxing layers and the only way I found that out was by testing it. So we imported it into a drawing app here and then I started going ahead and getting to work on doing the line work on that, just sort of drawing over things. I picked out this art style a while back because of basically that I'm not very good at drawing clean lines and so the best way for me to hide this is to make everything look more sketchy. Uh, you can see here mm, I'm going ahead and replacing some of the collider boxes on the ground there and uh, this is my first test with the line art and as you can see it looks okay. Uh, but so we just keep working, here's it with some color. Um, and yeah, we just got to keep doing more and more tests and testing and testing. Um, like here and here, like you can see the coll collisions and all these tests and more tests and more tests. And oh, this collider box took me forever. Ugh. Mm, and so it took me a whole four days longer than I expected. And I ended up having to end this vlog, come back, and then finish the art. But I'm pretty satisfied with the way that all this turned out. Um, it ended up being a lot more research than I thought because I had all of my, I have a lot of this stuff like you can you can see all the tassels and some of the conlang writing in the background and the signs and stuff. You can see uh, the bone, the pile of bones there, the little creatures being shipped around, the um, the style of the lights. Like a lot of these things are things I've thought about for my world, but they're not all in one place. They're all in like a big inspiration board on Pinterest. And so now I'm like having to put all the stuff in one spot so I can actually use it. Um, but I'm really happy with the way this finally turned out. I think that it's looks very much like the way I want. I think I'd actually play this game. I think this is gonna be a good game. Well, as you saw, I didn't quite finish everything. Um, cause I, uh, I had D&D, &D and I forgot, so, uh, yeah, oh, we should move on this way, cause then I have the, the aesthetic, the aesthetic cat. Um, so, yeah, so, well, but I got through, uh, I figured out how everything worked that I wanted to, even though I didn't finish the actual art for the level. Um, so I think, like, I, honestly, I'd call that a success. And then, just as usual, I underestimated how much time the, uh, the amount of, like, the grind part of it would be. Um, but I was really relieved to see that, like, that the actual technical side of things so far has been far simpler than I anticipated. I know at the beginning of this I was making a whole, like, song and dance about this, but, uh, I cannot begin to explain how much harder Unity and Unreal is in comparison to this system. It's very easy. Uh, I'll go ahead on my own time and finish up uh, the actual uh, art for the level. Um, but yeah, oh, in, the D in, in my D&D session today, we got the biggest lower drop. So basically the way the gods work is that they, ha in this world, is they're not sapient. They only have power 
if people like believe in them. Sort of like the kami from uh, Japanese folklore, I believe. And there's like these three people who have sealed off our continent from all the other continents who are like playing this magical game and they were like perpetually winning it because they seized the power of uh, unity, balance, and it's less than, like independence or ambition. So like they're always gonna win because they can just reframe everything else to be about that. And I think it's really cool. Um, so yeah, so tomorrow I'll go ahead and jump back in, uh, finish up the art side of things. Um, and then you'll you'll get to see the final result here. I'm not ready to entirely announce the game that I'm working on, but if you've been around the channel for a while, you probably know. In the meantime, you can check out Little Vern Maiden, which is a scrappy life sim about murder and self-care. It's it's a little jank because it's my first professional game, but I still think it's worth it, though like three dollars that it costs three dollars USD. If you can't do swing that because you're not in the US, I totally get it. But like that's less than a cup of coffee these days, so I think you should pick it up. That's weird. This is too YouTubery for me. I don't like it. I don't like this, guys. I'm not supposed to do multiple calls to action at the end of a video, but because I believe that my audience is very smart, I'm gonna do my second one and say go check out this video uh, next because I think that if you like this one, you'll probably like that one.